what we are doing is to basically put all the information we know about the car in the code we have and try to push the limit in a way a human probably couldn't do. My name is Christopher Prohm. I'm a data scientist at Volkswagen Data Lab and currently uh, responsible for the path planning part of this project. Yeah, so essentially uh, all the different parts of uh, Volkswagen Group collaborating on this project. Uh, they bring essentially different ideas onto the table uh, that now allows us to have like various different approaches that we can uh, switch out, compare again against each other. Do I look there to you? So basically the idea is to place an inflatable car crossing the, the trajectory that we're planning to follow. Either stop in front of that or replan the trajectory in order to avoid that. In layman's terms, what we're trying to achieve here is to use technology on the car, which is a LiDAR, to be able to detect an object in front of it and make a decision as to whether or not it should avoid that object or if there's no room to safely avoid to come to a stop. Now we're going to send the vehicle out to test track and we're going to test its ability to detect the object and then stop in front of it. We'll be travelling at 100 kph on approach. Three, two, one. I think if you want to impress somebody, that would be the way to do it. We've got a mechanic actually measuring the distance to the obstacle. Your variance can be up to half a metre each time. It's quite a difficult thing to consistently stop in front of the target. So in the test we bumped into the obstacle and the driver was probably not very happy about that, but we as data scientists are very happy about that because that shows us the limit of our model. We know where the limits are and now we can adjust all the models. We are here to test in the real world, so when things happen that are actually not foreseen for us, this is really the data we are interested in, because everything else we have in the simulation. We are very happy because we got so close to the object that um, I don't think a human driver could do that. When I was in the car, I was approaching it at quite obviously a substantial speed and you think to yourself, if this is real, you really would hurt yourself or die and it did feel like the car actually took over and saved your life if it was a real scenario. I was really impressed, yeah, I thought it was really nice and smooth and the car just responded how a human really should drive. Now we have a lot of uh, rain outside, which causes a slippery surface and due to the different friction properties of the surface, uh, the braking distance has become much longer. It's difficult to judge exactly how well the car can stop in these new conditions. I think what we're beginning to see now is people valuing motorsport as an environment to test and develop algorithms, new approaches, teamwork as well. You know, and that's really what motorsport has always provided. So to see the OEMs engaging now, as well as the university partners that we have, it's a great compliment.